Welcome to the 3026 Breakdown. I'm your host, John Lee, and today we'll be doing the MMA stock report from UFC Phoenix. A couple days late with this because of Martin Luther King Day and me having a three-day weekend. Yay, booze. Anyway, with no further ado, let's get started with the UFC Phoenix MMA stock report. First up, stock up Sergio Pettis. That was the best Sergio Pettis has looked in his UFC career. Sergio Pettis now has six UFC wins. That's pretty impressive, though, to be fair, they've all come by decision. He did hurt Moraga near the end of the first, and I had the over two and a half, so I was a little nervous, but Moraga came back. You know, he was a tough dude, and Sergio Pettis weathered the storm in the second and was still looking really clean and sharp in the third. Uh, easy decision for little Pettis. So he's now won six, lost two. He's been finished in the two he lost. Uh, one of them was at 135, though, to Alex Casares. Um, so this guy looks like the limit for Sergio Pettis. It doesn't look like he's ever going to be a super finisher, but you know he looked a lot sharper in the pocket. His eyes were open. He was countering cleanly. Uh, you know, good formation, good form. Um, good footwork getting in and out. So he's definitely on the way to being a contender, whether he ever becomes a champion or a serious contender in the 125 division with Mighty Mouse up there and Joe B and some of those other dudes up at the top. We'll see. But he's definitely improving, and it's a pretty good bet that he goes to decision most fights, unless he's fighting someone who's kind of a killer. So a little bit of a tip to look for is the over two and a half in Sergio Pettis fights because I think it's almost always hit. Because I think even when he got finished, I think except in the Ryan Manoy fight, even when he got finished by Caceres, it was after the two and a half minute mark. But I didn't check, so don't quote me on it. Let me know if you can in the comments. That'd be good. But very impressive by Sergio Pettis. Most impressive performance in UFC Phoenix. Stock down MMA judges. Just when they start to get root, get it right, right? Just like in The Godfather, just when I thought I was out, you sucked me back in. I thought we were almost done with having to complain about the judging at events. You know, the end of last year, they started to get it right most of the time. Even though I was on the wrong side of the Neil Magny Johnny Hendricks bet, uh, I still thought that, you know, rewarding people trying to finish and do stuff rather than laying on a guy is progress. But, man, they messed it up two fights in a row here with the Saunders fight and the Held fight. Um, props to Joe Lozon, who just seems like the coolest dude for saying he thought he lost that fight because everyone thought he lost that fight except the judges. So, hopefully this is just a blip and MMA judging continues to not be a story. But, man, that was bad, especially back-to-back. -back. I think the fact that it was back-to-back, -back, it was the Saunders win and then the Held loss, the Lozon win. Back to back, the people were just like, Jesus, man, get it right for once. How are you guys the only guys who don't have this the right way? So get it together, MMA judges. Stock up Nina Ansaroff. So before here, we thought, you know, it's possible that Ansaroff training with Amanda Nunez and at ATT was going to be improved, and it definitely looks like she was. Uh, she, her grappling looked great. She came close to finishing the fight in the second round, which would have messed up my bet, but luckily she held off until the third uh, to sink in that choke on Liebarger. Um, so she looked really good, man. Hopefully she'll continue to improve. I don't know if she's a future champion, but she definitely looked much improved. Her cardio looked a lot better, which was definitely a question mark coming in, and her grappling looked great. Her striking looked good, man. So she... Definitely had a great performance also, and it's cool that MMA's new power couple is continuing to win. Okay, here's where I start with the hot takes. Stock down MMA jiu-jitsu. So while Alexi Olenek's Ezekiel choke while being mounted was kind of cool, Jesus Christ, man, that should not happen in the UFC. I'm sorry, that is some really amateur shit. Getting caught with that is a problem. And that guy has like seven or eight finishes by that choke. So you had to have known that that was a thing he does. And you still got caught by it while you were mounted. Jesus Christ, Victor Pesta. Do some damn jujitsu. But 
again, that's just kind of stuff that shouldn't happen in the UFC. Von flu chokes shouldn't happen in the UFC. Uh, you know, all these crazy submissions that sometimes happen shouldn't really be happening. And they're happening because they've watered down the product a little bit. And now there are dudes who were kind of rushed into the UFC and maybe even got a win or two, but they have big gaping holes in their game. And then you get embarrassing stuff like a dude mounting a guy and then getting tapped out, which yikes, man, we're going to talk about that for years. That's like the MMA equivalent of being put on like a really bad poster with a dunk in the NBA. And lastly, wait and see with Yair Rodriguez. I don't know if I'm the only one. I haven't been looking at people's immediate reactions to it, but it does seem like they're trying to sell Yair Rodriguez to us. And that performance was I. It was I, you know? I feel like I'm the mad rapper here. Like, I've seen more John Blaze shit from prospects. Yair's still doing kicks and the wrestling thing, but, you know, he didn't really wrestle with BJ Penn. BJ Penn was kind of a stationary target. It reminded me of when uh, Yi Jing Lang, the uh, Chinese NBA prospect, was coming over to the NBA, and they had him do a workout against a chair, and he looked really good against the chair, and then we started calling him Chairman Yi. He was just not a very good player. He was not ready to be an NBA-level player. That's kind of what this BJ Penn fight was. Yeah, your Rodriguez is a good prospect. The win over Caceres was decent. A lot of spinning stuff. It was kind of weird. Um, but, you know, he still hasn't really fought anyone. Like, I heard people say, like, oh, he should be one fight from a title shot. Max Holloway or Jose Aldo would murder Yair Rodriguez right now. Uh, even, you know, Jeremy Stevens I saw thrown out. I think Jeremy Stevens is a terrible matchup for him. The top of that 145 division is no joke, man. If they want to bring Yair along... And they want to have him have a chance to be a Conor McGregor for Mexico or whatever. They need to bring him along a little slower. Like maybe the winner of the Korean Zombie versus uh, Bermudez, maybe. And that might even be a step too far. You know, Cub Swanson, I think, would beat him down. I think the Korean Superboy would knock him out probably. Like that division's tough, man. That division is full of killers. And Yair's still got a game that has exploitable tendencies. He throws crazy shit. He spins. That stuff's not going to work against these killers. And that's going to leave him open. And I think that depending on the matchup, Yair Rodriguez might be someone to look into betting against in his next matchup. If they put him against a top five guy, Ricardo Lamas would smash Yair Rodriguez. All these dudes. Frankie Edgar would destroy him. I'd bet against him. So we'll see. Maybe he's getting a little overvalued. I've seen a lot of people saying he's like a star in the making. Maybe. You know, he's definitely got the look. He's definitely got the flashy style from now. But we've seen a lot of dudes who have a flashy style that it doesn't translate at the top of the division. More guys are Philippe Nover than Conor McGregor. So let's wait and see. Let's give him a not-too-hard matchup next time. Maybe, like I said, the winner of the Korean Zombie versus Dennis Bermudez I think would be a great matchup for him. And let's see what he does when he's in with someone who can wrestle, isn't a million years old, and isn't Alex Casares. That's going to wrap up the MMA Stock Report for UFC Phoenix. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a comment. Give me a like on YouTube and retweet this video if you enjoy it. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.